So here I have my drawing on my Arch 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I have the reference photo next door and it's in the description box below. Just click on the link and I'll be going over my techniques and how I paint this. And patrons get the traceable and the extended version. New number 12, uh, 16 Neptune series brush. Nice big fat brush. So um, sometimes I do wet on dry with the sky, but I think this time I'm going to do wet on wet. So I'm going to get this paper wet. I'm going to go right over my drawing like so. And my sky will be a different color. I'm going to do some altering blue. I'm going to add a little teeny bit of burnt sienna just to tone it down. You want a fair amount of this paint. All right, I'll start out the top. I do like these swooping lines. You can see that I didn't get all the areas wet. You can add water. You want it kind of lighter as it goes down to the horizon. See, I'm lifting the board up. I actually taped this to a cardboard board. I'm just kind of moving it down. So you see like little, it just create like your own little, right here, just by kind of swooping, you've created some clouds and dynamic sky that was not already in the picture. And now you've just changed the picture to your kind of picture. Do you want to make it a little bit darker up top? Just adding some more color. And I want to keep those clouds kind of happy accident that's happened. Here I'm going to mix up some light green using Prussian blue and yellow and just kind of do a, a nice wash across where the um, corn stalks will be. You know, make it like a nice, I have a little brown in there too, like a little burnt umber to make it like more of a olive ground of green. Really like wash, almost like tea consistency. Just put that light wash in the background so that your background isn't white and when you go to put the corn stalks on it it's not just this white ground with corn stalks in it so i'm just going to wash that in real quick and uh, you know put it across the paper as you see here you might you might want to blend it a little bit where it hits the blue so kind of really kind of wash that edge in and of course wait till that blue dries before you do that because otherwise it gets muddy it could be you know, not so pretty. I'm going around my little um, pumpkins, but I don't know if it's necessary. Maybe you can paint over them if it's really light enough so that um, you can paint the orange over the pumpkins and it wouldn't be a problem. But if you can paint around them, you can do that also. So it's just a technique you want to try either way. I'm doing some of them maybe like that and the rest of them I'm going to paint over them. And just really simple. I mixed up some burnt umber. I'm going to add a little yellow to it. Get it really loose, like tea consistency. It's adding a lot of water and just kind of again washing it. I'm kind of holding my brush on its side, getting that nice wash. And so if I miss some areas where it hasn't hit the paper, that's great. You get that dry brush look, that rustic kind of look you want because basically the pumpkins are sitting on this like grass, uh, well not grass, they're sitting on <laughs> straw. So you want kind of like a rustic texture. And cold pressed paper lends, it to, lends itself to that. I kind of decided to mush around going on pumpkins. I figured it's light enough that we can paint right over it. No problem. So now that it's dry, I'm going to go back in and um, I realized the top was not that dry, but I'm going to go back in and lift up the um, the windmill wind panels. And so I'm t lifting, I'm doing the technique called lifting. So you take the brush that's got water on it and you're just kind of lifting up the color below. And I use a stiffer brush for this. This is like the, I can use an eight round, a long round or whatever it works for you, but it has to be a stiffer brush to do this. And then once it's lifted up, you can stop painting over it. So now it's lifted. So now I'm mixing up some darker greens, medium greens, lighter greens. These will all be used to paint um, the corn stalks. You want a variety of greens. You don't want one color green. And the technique to do this, I'm using my Princeton 12 long round, uh, excuse me, 12 Neptune series brush. I got rid of the 16 because it, it's kind of so big, right? It, it, it's it's kind of floppy. <laughs> I mean, here I'm using the 16 for a little bit, but it's a very floppy brush. It might be really difficult for somebody who's new to start using that brush um, for some detailed work. I'm just putting in the stalks, and then I'm going to go in and start putting in some leaves. For the leaves, it's just this movement. It's like up and down, up and down, like a, going up and down, up, pull your, push your brush up, and then push it down. And then you can make some Vs here and there but kind of do long ones and short ones and variety of them all around your stalks in different colors. See, it kind of looks like V's, you know, all around the stalk that you made and make them smaller and larger in different color tones, et cetera, et cetera. 
Also another trick, um, just so you can fill it in, I'm just kind of mushing some of the paint color around. I just put a little water on it and just kind of mushing it in between so that it doesn't look like this weird stock with like <laughs> leaves. It won't look kind of loose and natural like there's stalks behind it. It's just gonna look like a stick with some leaves. So just mush the paint around a little bit. Different color tones will help a lot and still leave some space you can see in the light background. Now I'm taking some burnt umber and just kind of mushing the paint on the side. The same technique we did in the beginning. It's a little bit darker. We're kind of just putting it in and kind of just going on the side and wherever it doesn't hit, that's great. You've got that dry brush look, just simple. It's got a little green because it's still wet with the green, but it's no big deal. It kind of looks nice, kind of like a cast shadow is hitting it. And that's all I did for the foreground, kind of just pushing my brush on the side and getting that lovely little kind of uh, color of the, of the um, the hay, I can't even think today. Um, and again, going back in my stocks and filling it in with those V's that we talked about. Hey, I'm doing a light yellow, green color, and just loosely painting it really fast. That's the key. Just kind of move around, move around the paper, go up and down, move around really quickly. See how I'm doing this with the Princeton 12 Neptune series? The consistency of the paint is probably like tea, coffee, going around. I wish some paint over to the left, as you can see, and I'm going around, I'm going back over it. You're gonna do several layers of this. It's gonna really help you have more depth with your painting. Now I'm doing the background trees. Again, it's a lot darker color. I, it's not super dark, but it's dark enough because there's a lot of, it has to have some contrast. And you can see in the photograph that these trees are much darker. So here I'm kind of tapping the edges where the leaves would kind of be going out, as you can see in the photograph, and then mushing down in the middle where it's more like a solid kind of color. But even then, it has to have like inconsistencies with color because it wouldn't be just one flat, solid color. So it's loose paint, you're pushing it around. We'll be doing some layers on top of that also to get even more depth. But you're doing up the middle and the side, you know, wherever you want the trees. And you don't have to keep it green. If you want to make them more uh, fall colored, go right ahead. Put in some like oranges and reds and browns, all that good stuff. I'm mixing up some more color myself. I'm putting in some oranges and some browns in here just so give it some variety because it gets a little boring just to have a solid green. I know the photograph shows it green, but you don't have to follow everything to a T. And that's another thing. When you're looking at photographs or things that you see, this is where the artistry comes in. You are editing it out for what you like. You might want to put in some color and make it different. Make Maybe the tree isn't going to be like three trees. You can take out one of the trees and just make one big tree, you know. Uh, I noticed that my trees are all kind of like like soldiers in a line. So I have to make one look taller and mix more contrast and makes more interest in the picture even if it's a little taller than the photograph it doesn't really matter as long as it looks a little different from the other trees and I added like a more of a you know colorful brownish orangey tree on the right hand side again to give it some you know interesting composition just kind of pushing the paint around and then having the little tippy taps at the end to show the leaves out in the air that's kind of what you do fill it all in add some contrast as you can see here it doesn't take much time to do this with the number 12 Princeton series brush. It's really easy to do this. Now I'm going to go back in and add my little pumpkins with some, um, I used Cadmium Yellow Deep and little Cadmium, Cadmium Red and Light to make the color. And you can make a variety of the tones, adding more yellow, adding more red, etc., etc. And just putting all the pumpkins in. I added way more pumpkins in the photograph and because I just felt like it looked more like a pumpkin patch. You can choose what you want to do. And here I'm just filling in the color. You can fill in like one solid color first and then go back in and start adding in some more values on the right hand side of the other pumpkins. Because otherwise it just looks like a flat pumpkin and it's kind of boring. But you want to have a variety of tones. So I'll add a little deeper color. You can kind of bleed it in as it's wet or wait till it's dry and go ahead and put the color on top. It depends on how you feel, what you feel more confident in painting. Try both ways. Um, sometimes I do them where I bleed, so like right now I'm bleeding the darker color on the right hand side, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I wait till it's dry and go back over the top. You want to start off light, always start off light, and then go back in and add the deeper tones, because if you don't start off light, you can't reverse it. That's the way of the world of watercolor. It's light to dark. Once you get your pumpkins in, you can go back in with another dark green round, like, you know, medium greens, dark green rounds, and doing that same technique where you're going up and over and down, creating those, those, uh, corn stalks you know you see now we have a variety of greens it's starting to look like a little field you want to just build and build with this whole situation you want to just do one color at once um you know it takes time it could go pretty fast but you have to wait for the layers to dry in between otherwise it just looks like a muddy mess again right so i'm putting in some 
green colors that are darker and doing the same technique up and over and down like a little V, crisscrossing some of them, all that good stuff to create the coin stalks that you see in the photograph. Now I'm going to add some yellow um, cameo deep, like almost right out of two, butter consistency, really thick, add a little bit of that red and just go around those little petals really quickly. It's thicker, it's going to stay on top of the paper, almost like gouache because sometimes it works like that. And then I'm going to add in some depth again with the green going back into the trees. And like I told you, it's like a layering situation because you'll notice it, it will dry lighter. Watercolor always dries lighter. It's not like acrylic paint or oil paint. It dries lighter, so you have to do like glazing, which is a layering technique. And the great thing about glazing is that because watercolor is opaque, um, if you don't go really heavy on the paint, you have some nice nuances with colors underneath it. And that's where it plays, and we'll do some tutorials on that. But I'm going to add another layer of darker value so that the, you can really see the trees in the background, the corn stalks kind of stick out more, all that good stuff. Otherwise, it just looks like a flat wash of one note color. You want some contrast color. You want it to have a variety to make it more interesting. And see, I'm pulling the viewer right into the middle there with that darker tree in the center, right? And then it puts them on the side. So now it's balancing on that side. Then you can do it on the other side. I'm going to add some more darker color on my pumpkins here. Again, you're building the layers and all the elements in the picture slowly. You can't do it overnight, like all the, well, you can do it overnight. You can do it like, get away till it dries um, and just add in a deeper color again on the, I'm doing it on the right side because the sun's coming from the left. I'm going to start in taking some ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna and then putting in the details for the windmill, really just kind of filling the lines that I've drew in, this little um, contraption up top, I don't know what you would call it, that connects the little panels to the to the actual thing. I'm, like I said, I'm using... Um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to create this gray, maybe a little red. It can make great grays and you can change the grays up by adding either more burnt sienna or ultramarine blue. So it can be more bluer gray or more browner gray depending on. And you're just kind of filling in those little lines it created with the color. Really simple. I'm using the Princeton 8 long round brush for this. Forgot. And then see the windmill isn't actually white. If you look in the photographs you got some gray panels there. I'm just going to fill those in. Going to kind of slowly bleed in the color. You can put a little dark color on one side and then just take your brush and put some water on it and you'll bleed in the little panels to get that depth and um, the shadows that you see in the actual windmill that that are in the photograph. A little bit darker. See how they're a little bit darker on the left than they are on the right in the photograph. Depending on how much, sometimes you may feel a little like, mm, I don't want it so dark. So I put some gray in, but I didn't put a lot of gray in there. I didn't want it super dark. But see, I'm just putting the color in. I'll go take my brush and I'll kind of mush that down. And, and bleed in the color so it looks nice and soft gray. Really simple. So Get now I'm going to go back in and add some like here. grasses with some greens and some twigs like with the burnt umber around my Leave pumpkins. Side, with I brush. can use some greens too. You it's see kind of them in the photograph. There's some like little leaves Letting hanging around. Letting the paper. Putting all those kind of like colors in uh, there. I'm going to build up all that stuff. And I'll be nice adding in some gray tones that to work for get you? the shadows of the pumpkins. Holding on. Here I took some, again, Ultimate blue and burnt sienna, and I made them mix them together, and you get this pumpkin. nice shadow color. Handles and here. well, actually, right now I'm doing the burnt umber, but um, on the pumpkins and, and the, umber. The tw their tops are mm. a lighter green or a darker brown. You can either do that; those two colors or a paints gray, whatever feels great. But we're gonna add the um, the shadows with the ultimate blue, blue excuse me, ultimate green blue and burnt sienna on the side here. I just put it on the side, on the bottom, kind of going in the middle, and then to the back. Like in the photograph, it shows kind of going back to the right a little bit on an angle. You can kind of try and wiggle that in as well. And another little good, good trick is that you can actually stick that, if it's lighter, tea consistency, on the pumpkin once it's dry to have a nice shadow on the pumpkin with the same color with the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna to have some nice shadows on the pumpkins like I'm doing here. Just a little bit, not too much, you see? Just a little bit on the pumpkins. And then it has a more three-dimensional look. Less is more. I also added... Um, I like a deeper blackish brown in my sunflowers. I didn't know if I kind of left that out. Like I said, the uh, Patreons get the extended version, but I think you guys can figure out. You stick the color right in between the sunflower. It's pretty simple. And once you do this, you're pretty much almost done. I mean, you can tweak it with like real details and go back in and add some things if you want. But, you know, that's pretty much the, the whole deal breaking down this photograph. Washing in the sky, washing in the greens, slowly putting in and building up the layers of the corn stalks, 
putting the pumpkins, adding some shadows on the right hand side. And you can use that gray color to put in some little lines too. And then you go back at the end and you have details with all the grays and et cetera and the darker colors you have. And that's pretty much it. And then we have the pumpkin patch. My favorite part is to remove the tape. I use Scotch Magic tape. Some people use um, washi tape, but this works for me. And there we go. So really kind of loose washing in color, tapping in color. You know, you could scrape to make this or you could put in masking fluid. And the sky does not have to be the picture. It can make it a nice dyna dynamic sky just by washing in real fast. I just did that real fast. And for shadows, I love Ultimine Blue and Burnt Sienna. So let me know if this was complicated for you, easy for you. Um, you have to break it down like that. You just wash it in. You don't see the perfect little stalks. They're just a suggestion of the corn stalks. You kind of know what they are. Um, it's just really loose. And if you want to make it more serious, well, you can make it more serious. But again, when it dries, you can add, start off light always, then add in the deeper color. If you start off going too dark too early, that's what happens that you mess up because it's just not going to happen. It's not going to come out right. You're going to be stuck. So you can add these deeper, lovely little corn stalk leaves after it's dried. Get this another even darker still. I'm gonna add a little paint gray in my green here. Get some of these even darker. And now they really stand out. You see how this works? But you can't do that in the beginning. You have to do that after the fact. Now you see there's really dark ones that stand out that I just put in. You don't want them all to be like that. You want some of them to have that depth. And there you go. See how I put those in? And you can still see, maybe put a little dark lines on, against the side of the um, stock on the right-hand side also. So you can kind of see the line a little more. It's like a shadow to it. These are just things you can just tweak and add at the end. And we have a nice corn stock, corn field. Okay, don't forget to subscribe and hit that um, bell notification button to know my tutorial is up. And thank you for coming by. Have a great day.